Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and today we are hanging out, just doing a little bit of hobbying. My weekend's kind of up in the air, um, but I had some free time this afternoon, and I thought, you know what, let's hang out. Uh, basically, I'm using this downtime between Age of Sigmar 3.0 and 4.0, even though we're going to be here for a couple months, I guess, to uh, catch up on some other projects, as well as get things ready that I want for 4th edition. Uh, and I will go to those really quick. That's the wrong button. There we go. So let's walk through what I got here. First of all, you'll see this tall boy. I got Usherin right here and uh, looking quite nice. I do say so. I haven't finished all the details on the count because I just thought it would be easier to get a sense of how much color was needed to break up the gray. When I saw him on the base with the stone and stuff, I had painted these guys separately. Uh, he pops right off this little stand here. So anyway, yeah, I've been doing that for a bit, um, but I had them glued and kind of clamped down because this uh, plastic base they sent me was like super warped. It's mostly better now. It still seesaws a smidge, but anyway, um, had to do quite a bit of clamping to get him level, but he's looking good. And then moving over here, what I'm going to be working on today are actually some models for a game called Legends of Signum. Um, they're a art studio and game design company out of, um, Ukraine. And they sent me uh, two starters actually that I want to show off here. I'm only going to be painting one of them because only one of them is primed, but, uh, let's see. Some really cool models here. They, they mostly do like the Kickstarters you see, like for, you know, funding a, a wave of designs. A lot of artists do that now, basically. And it's awesome. I love that they do that. But they also have rules for their own game called Legends of Signum. And they asked me to look at their range and see if there's anything I liked. And these guys are like fish people. Kind of Cthulhu-esque. You can see they um, are somewhere between the... Like Rask is a character from Hordes. If any of you guys played that. <clears throat> Here's another two. He's up on, perched on a rock with a blow dart. And just a standard, my camera's kind of fighting me here. Hold on. Yeah, let me turn that auto thing off here. There we go. Now she figured it out. So anyway, as you can see, that looks awesome. I started painting one of them here. Uh, he's got a nice little fish banner. And I got furthest on him. This is with my test model to test out like the, basically it's Plague Bearer Flesh with a bunch of other washes built on top of it. It's normally how I like to do stuff is a uh, block out the color with contrast and then build up from there. And this is the boss guy. Isn't that sick looking? Oh, he's like on a crab. You can't quite see it because he's all primed up, but he's holding a bomb that's smoking. And this is like kind of a wispy alchemical type of thing. Uh, he's got a little frog stuck to his... Oop. Come on, you just had it. <laughs> oh wait, that's not helping me at all. Give me a one sec. Did you know, in photography, <clears throat> it helps to hit the right button. So, uh, yeah. That's what this guy is looking at. I just thought he was the coolest. I saw this and I was like, I just, I want him. <laughs> I'll probably use him in a bunch of uh, mini agnostic games as well as trying out their stuff. But the other one I wanted, I know it's a little blurred here, but they have a witch hunters group. And so this is Wolfman. They hooked up a werewolf with a giant quad gun, which like pure sex appeal. I understand. Um, there's a unit that's couple of these guys which are just kind of uh between the helmets and the little like bits you can add on they kind of fit somewhere between pirate and conquistador i tried to lean into those two directions but yeah um oh that's right there's a third one as you can see you got a nice little hat crucifix jagged sword that's cool stuff anyway uh the two that really stood out to me were this because it reminded me of the War Machines uh, Warcaster that you used to always get where she had a big like, reaping scythe. It was just so metal looking. And then this one, because that 
is a witch hunter with a steam-powered wheelchair, and it is the most baller thing ever. Look at that sucker. He's got a... What is that? He's got a tri... Uh, I guess barrel? It looks like a crossbow. There's no reason a crossbow has barrels, but he's got them both, so I don't know. Maybe there's a bow on top <clears throat> of a tri-pistol. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I just think this guy is awesome. And I just, uh, it absolutely blew my mind when I saw it. I was like, yes, we need, first of all, just different representation for folks of all different disability levels because all kinds of people play games. But in addition to that, here we go. Should be back on to auto. Hey, here we go. This particular model is freaking dope. So anyway, that's what we're painting up today. I'll throw these unprimed ones back in my box. We'll get on to it. So, that is what I am working on. I would love to hear what everybody else is doing today. Let's see. He looks majestic. <laughs> oh, my uh, Usherin? Yeah, that was from a while ago. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm really liking him. I, I wasn't the biggest fan with, like, the profile of him. Um, I wish he kind of stood up just a bit more. Like, he has the height. Like, his proportions are spot on. I just wish his pose was just maybe a bit more towering and, like, kind of looking down on the battlefield. Kind of like Nagash does. I guess that would kind of fit Death's superiority complex. I don't know. Um, I'm going to call you good for right now, my good man. Let's move on. So I got four chumps to paint, and let's see. What is everybody else working on today? If I caught you painting, if I didn't, that's fine. Let me uh, pop over to see if there's any news announcements worth talking about. Also, uh, off camera here to the top left, I finally busted out all of my Wadroon for Conquest uh, all over again. It took quite a while because everything was still packed away from the move, to be honest, over summer. So let's see, next would be, let's get that armor. So grab, oops. That. I uh, first tried Mantis Warriors Green for the first time for like an orc skin. Absolutely adore it. I don't know. I don't know how that fits in anything, but I'm just passing along a thing that I found out today. Yeah, that would work. And I am grabbing every single one except the one I'm looking for. Okay, there's one I need. I'm looking for like six paints and I seem to be grabbing every paint except for them. <laughs> Use, nope, I have one of those. There goes purple. Aha, there we go. Okay, looking for all my browns to get all my straps done because that to me is the best part about contrast paints is that kind of stuff the straps i don't, don't want to deal with this give me some gorgon to brown it'll make a nice perfect little uh willie howdy 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 <laughs> hey dub was working on my stormcast annihilators but i decided to take an early break despite not having made much progress to begin with it's all good if it ever starts to feel like work, put it down. Just chilling for another so 10 or so minutes till I decide to eat dinner. Fair enough. Where are you located at in the world, everybody? I am here in the great Midwest area. My local game group, if we're just chatting, uh, just today decided to do a... Auto again. Get that fixed to a nice place. I think 
just. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that works for everybody involved. Let me know if it does not. Hopefully that'll kind of break up some of the busyness of the screen. Uh, my local game group, uh, we meet at a local uh, bar here in town every Monday night because the bar owner is it's uptown uh, in Ankeny. And the owner is kind enough to let us use a space because he himself is a war gamer. And uh, it's super rad. So Monday nights we have like a whole section of tables. It's pretty much blocked out for us. And we meet there and I mean, usually we only are there long enough to play a game of something. You know, you show up. What are you playing? Warcry. Okay, cool. We'll play, you know, that you might be able to get two games in. But like a game of AOS. Uh, last week I talked about, I played a game of um, Middle Earth battle strategy game i can't remember which acronym it is but yes lord of the rings <laughs> um and i actually had a an immensely fun time i had tried it once before uh, and i had fun then too it was with my buddy jeremy uh, back in iowa city um but maybe it was just because i played it for a second time it felt like things clicked a little bit more i don't know why but anyway I uh, had a wonderful time with that, so I actually did order a Dwarf Ranger Force that is on its way in the mail as we speak. I think I'll be getting it on Monday. I'm very excited for that. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, man, I'm way veering off track today. Point of me talking. We're starting a Kill Team campaign. <laughs> um... They all wanted to do Kill Team, and it's something that I'm, like, tangentially interested in. Like, I've heard enough good things about this edition of Kill Team, and the only reason I hadn't got into it earlier was simply because they just couldn't seem to land on what they wanted Kill Team to be. <laughs> so I was like, I think, like, many people, right, don't bother me until you figure it out. And it seems like they may have figured it out, so... um. happy for them. I was looking over the the various kill teams that exist and of course you can always build your own from your faction. That's super rad. Uh, for me and my purposes just to keep things simple because I don't plan on playing it a ton was I was just going to get one of their like boxes. Be like yeah this is my kill team and just, just learn that. Keep it real simple, real stupid. Um... And so I was looking up, they have like a set of Navy Breachers, where it looked like humans that go through the void and then just like smash into ships and stuff like that. And Yeah, I was like, oh man, I want those guys. Those look like rad. So anyway, that is the plan as we speak right now. Or it might just be orcs because everything for me at some point devolves into just playing the green skin faction. Of, of whatever it is, right? Right now, for me, that flavor is uh, Gloom Spike Gits. But yeah. Glad to make it to a live stream. Crammed war room. Setting up the table. It's all boxes from the move. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Nice. Well, hey, got some company. Let's see. New York State. France. Nice. Currently... Unpacking in Ontario, sweet. Um, I forgot to mention on your last stream, Doug, but I noticed in the last AOS rules article it said Storm Drake Guard would become a part of the extremist chamber. I have a prediction related to this. Interesting. Okay. Let's hear it. I would love to hear it. Just got into Blood Bolt, loving painting. Uh, way more with saturated colors. Isn't it so stinking fun? Like, Blood Bowl is, is just awesome. I have uh, an Orc Blood Bowl team. And there was a there was a crew in Iowa City that was really into it. They, like, had a big podcast. I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I'm not going to say the name. I don't know off the top of my head. So I don't want to say the wrong one. Um, But they were 
so good at the game that they didn't know how to ease up on the difficulty so I could learn. And <clears throat> one, for me, a, a very big thing for games and something that I've pointed out a few times, like if I play your game two or three times and I just get crushed every single time, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not asking to win. I'm not even asking him to win half the time. But I should like walk away from every game being like, ah, yes, that's what I did wrong. You know, like in War Machine, I, I got into it in a uh, second edition. And that was actually something that really stood out to me about it was I felt like I could stand there and watch other people like, and then, you know, learn vicariously of, oh yes, I see this decision. I see why you made it. I'm not like, quarterbacking back here but I get why you did X and then I just I see the results of it and I can learn from it it's all very clear to me and then for whatever reason I, I I just I guess I just don't have that with Blood Bowl so I just needed more time and it was just very punishing so I was like eh I'm just not having fun I'd rather just use my other night somewhere else so it wasn't like I don't like Blood Bowl the game seems great and I love the wackiness of it, and even the more cutthroat players all seem to really embrace the wackiness. So it's like, I love. But wacky and learning speed are not the same thing, necessarily. I felt like uh, a good example of, of a similar game in terms of complexity that I had a better time getting into is Necromunda, uh, which does also have a ton of rules. And I remember like the guy running it was just, dude, like, you're going to use maybe a twelfth of that rule book. <laughs> and I was like, interesting, okay. And when you think of it as a reference for what if, instead of, like, having to know it all, I don't know. <clears throat> it changed a lot. And I would like to, I, I think that I would feel the same about Blood Bowl if I had a chance to learn at a more reasonable pace. <laughs> uh, let's see, I got... So I got a, let's see, how many octopi do I have? Just those two. Okay. I think he had one, maybe. So I have one blue octopi. I was thinking orange for the other one, just to make them kind of an opposites thing. Oh, sorry, my foot tapping is there. The video game is 90% of the rules, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm actually just starting Flesh Eater Chords between the editions. Nice! Nice, nice. Let's see. Get some metallics. So, for most of their armor, I don't want it to look nice and gold, but I really, really love Runord Brass. It's one of my favorites. I suspect that dragons will get added to the Extremist Chamber. Vigilors and maybe the Knight Judicator will be added to the Vanguard Chamber. Everything else will go Warrior Chamber. I could see that. I could see that. I mean, yeah. Since I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I'm down with that. I'm trying to think of like any reason why. Sorry, my brain is processing a lot right now. I'm trying to like think of any reasons why. That would or wouldn't be the case. I mean, it just kind of seems like it would certainly be a clean restructuring for uh, keyword interactions if they did something similar to that, right? Just finished building my court. Looking forward to the new addition. Yeah, me too. Yes, I'm excited about what I've seen so far. Um, I'm still not convinced that beasts had to go. Like they, oh, in one of their articles, I had pointed out that they said uh, change, but not for change sake. And so that was has been my my thought process for some time now. Is just show me that it was worth it. I had don't. No, don't haven't seen anything that Beasts of Chaos couldn't fit into design wise yet. But alright. I'm still listening.
No more redeemer keyword. <laughs> I can't quite tell if that statement's because like you had a bad experience with like redeemer units. If you're uh, like of the Hail Satan variety and you're just like, yeah, get rid of the word redeemer in general. That could go a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm, I'm here for most of them. <laughs> I mean, this is a chill place. Uh, the full theological dissertations that I get randomly in my comment section of folks who are like, you don't understand Seraphon. Um, actually, it's based on the word regarding Seraphim, the angels, and then I'll, there'll be like a four paragraph dissertation on the nature of angels in the King James Bible. Nobody asked for it. They don't make fun of it. Don't engage with it. <laughs> But it just kind of leaves you scratching your head of like, how did we get here? <laughs> but no, I don't think that was a theological statement. Uh, let's see. Vigilors are supposed to be scouts in the lore, which makes them perfect for the Vanguard Chamber. The Chariot is now officially warrior and the dragons are extremists. Yeah, I could see that. <clears throat> He's already doing some senior level management restructuring. Oh, just needlessly restricts a lot of rules. Yeah, I, oh, that's right. Did that, did the last battle tome have, like, was there like a redeemer specialty thing? I can't remember. I didn't play that one uh, too terribly much, just when it came out. But interesting. I, uh, what was it? The Chariot Scroll was, was really interesting to me. Just in, because that was like, I feel like one of the fuller pictures that we've gotten of how the edition will work in terms of you're, you're seeing the pieces come together as far as like, you have command abilities. This uh, one unit can use so many of them simply because it is, you know, has this many wounds or whatever. It can use abilities in a unique way. So your brain starts to move with interest a little bit, which are the kind of articles that I love to talk about. The ones that always get me frothing or it's just like, I don't know. You know, those articles where they just don't have a lot of information. I felt like this, the clan rats one was that where it's like the difference was so minute in my opinion I'm happy for the new clan rats I really am and Skaven players should be stoked but I'm not going to stop everything on my day to be like guys whereas I don't know those articles that give you, I think, a greater insight, certainly when they have like uh, quotes from the design team of like, what were you going for? That's the most interesting thing to me. Because everyone's going to say that they can make a better game. That's regardless. That's just people being people on the internet, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but like, no one can go for what you were going for if they don't know your vision. Okay, let's see. Yes, there were dedicated Redeemer centers. Um, oh. How do you guys feel in the chat? I'm curious. They, at least for the initial rules that come out, okay, they haven't clarified anything with the battle tomes or whatever, but they had mentioned that um, Stormcast no longer have to choose between being Storm Keeps or like an army of Azir. And I'm just curious, what does everybody feel about that? Because I've seen some mixed things. Um, and they're interesting. You know, it's not like narrative players go we. It's it's more like when you when you think about taking away that kind of stuff, where that's a a, a narrative centric concept um, that you're trying to establish rules over. 
uh, it's interesting to me that some people get very attached to that. Like, they don't feel like, for example, they're playing Hammers of Sigmar unless they get some kind of special rule specifically for their army being Hammers of Sigmar. And the same goes for um, sub-factions and, you know, the... I like the, the Stormcast example that I just gave because it's not a sub-faction. It's just an army-building thing, which is different. I guess the same question could equally apply to Seraphon players when it comes to being from the realms or... Manic Dream Slon. No wrong answers. Uh, Stormkeep general ideas probably go... Yeah, that makes sense. I could definitely see that. I am excited for them to talk about allies. I'm very curious about that. There was a rumor that was shared oh, a while back now that like essentially like uh, spearhead boxes will be like will function like regiments of renown, I think. So like you buy a box and that's like it's whole it's a whole bespoke ally contingent. And I love that idea. If it's true, I don't actually know. But the way that it, army building they have me intrigued. I know a lot of people didn't care for the predicted or not predicted, uh announced changes where instead of like having battle line and heroes and that kind of stuff now you pick a hero and they have like a narrative hopefully a set of models that they are allowed to lead and that's how you build war groups that way which is how it works in conquest and i adore it in that system but i understand it being counterintuitive to what warhammer folks have known Uh, let's see. I'm going to miss it personally because I actually really liked how powerful Vindicators were in early 3rd edition. I'd save stack them in Stormkeep and then overtake my opponent with objectives. Fair enough. Didn't I read that each faction will have four different army types? Seems like it will create uniformity across the game. Yes, and that's uh, for the launch dates, like those things. It doesn't necessarily mean that like all battle tomes henceforth will, will keep things to four. But they at least picked four things to have some level of army distinction, I guess. Which is nice. It's appreciated for sure. <laughs> I never use those rules, but I think I prefer the sub faction ones with the Seraphon, Head Coalesce, and Starborn. So instead, okay, so I see what you're saying, Tree Guy, like instead of using like um, narrative specific forces like Hallowmorn, you, uh, well, no, wait, I'm trying to think. I can't think of a single Seraphon Thunder Lizards. We'll do that one, right? Whatever it is. Uh, you won't use the Thunder Lizard ones, but you'll choose like Starborn or Coalesced. Is that what you mean? I think it helps that you can choose your theme as opposed to feeling bad about your favorite storm host, for example. Oh, yeah. And I, and I see the absolute benefits of it. I tend to like it more than what things are now. You know, no one loves when they walk up to an event and some guy drops a... I don't know. Clearly a Blood Angels army and goes, oh yeah, these are Ultramarines because Ultramarines have whatever rules they want. Like, that's not... Actually, I wouldn't really care, to be perfectly honest with you, because I don't really care about much. But <laughs> apparently there are people who do care very much. I guess really then what the question is, is how big do the rules um, allow me to represent very different kinds of forces? Because, like, if you say to me, you know, Doug, your flesh eater course rather than emphasizing one particular thing um since there's no more battle line we're not incentivizing you to do any specific type of army building nothing like that just take whatever you want 
and I guess at that point, grab a different bolt here. Magenta. I'm gonna do a magenta shell. <laughs> I'm all for anything that makes the game more narrative. That's my jam. Yes, and that's actually been kind of where my direction has been, which is like building, say, example, my storm host. Right. Uh, I'm gonna go with Stormcast because I actually know some of the sub faction names. My brain is not blanking on them right now. So, like, let's say I wanted to play Stormcast in the new edition. Um, I would say uh, Anvils of Heldenhammer. Okay. Um, I know the paint scheme well. can paint it out really quickly. I like the fact that in this new kind of setup, I can say, what do I want my guys to specialize in? I'll build models towards that. And then if I want to simply change what they're good at, instead of a new paint scheme that has to be used to represent something, now I'm just like... What is the next attack wing of my Anvils of Helden army, you know, look like? Which I like the idea. I like that freedom. Because it's not a uh, either or, it's a yes and. Flesh Terror's Red. Apparently I get real rambly. Let's see. Um, you know, uh, MW Duo, you raise an interesting point. I'm all for anything that makes the game more narrative. I like what they're describing because what I am seeing is that they are making the game better for competitive and narrative players alike. This is a, a rising tide situation because just as they say that they can use these new battle packs and the modularity system of everything to like refine rules as they go, the same goes true for introducing new narrative places, locations, all of that. Um, where it could be something, and I hope that they embrace this, I don't know that they will, but... Something as simple as a PDF download can introduce an entire new Path of Glory arc, um, you know, resource system because it just introduces a new battle pack, it has new magics, it has new terrain rules, it has new command. You know what I mean? All the things that can go like those same levers go to continuously balancing the game. They can be used for anything. What that means is that, like, I look forward to seeing what folks like the guys at the Mortal Realms podcast come up with when all that modularity is just put into their hands and their team of warlock engineers <laughs> has a great time with it. And uh, I want to see what their Adepticon events look like next year. I'm very stoked. I don't actually know what the timeline of that will be like as far as like how long they'll actually have to come up with stuff. I don't know. But it seems like everything will be out by then, obviously. It's just a matter of how that goes with planning. I like to team up my favorite storm host with Anvils of the Hammer and Astral Templars with some of those awesome heroes like Bastion and Ionis. Uh, it would be just like the books. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of those heroes come and go. I actually think, I kind of wish the Warmaster keyword was given out a little bit more. Like, if someone's a named character, like Gut Rot Spoon appears in so many random places when AOS first launched. The dude just like pops up out of nowhere and is like, hey, I'm in charge of this group now. And then just like commandeers a bunch of Nurgle dudes. And it's awesome. Like, I just feel like that should be a thing that more characters can do. <laughs> Give him...
Remick is all patchy and gross. My inspiration is Laszlo's cursed hat from what we do in the shadows. What are these models from? These are from um, Signum Games. They are a design studio out of Ukraine, and they have their own game called Legends of Signum, but you can buy the models and the STLs and all that kind of stuff online from their site. But uh, they're beautiful swamp gremlin dudes. I just, I love them to death. Uh, they just screamed Cthulhu when I saw them, but like a fantasy style, which we don't get a lot of, I feel. Um, let's see. So when I saw them and uh, someone from their team reached out, I was like, I want to feature these. I, I showed earlier there's a uh, a witch hunter's crew and one of them is like in a steam powered wheelchair and they're rocking like a tri gun or tri barrel gun. It's so cool. Those look great. Thank you. I'm okay with sub factions not having specific rules, but I'm a little afraid there could be less lore written about them. You know, Elrit, that's a fantastic point. Um, so I played Bone Splitters when they first came out because I just I thought it was just hysterical. Um, still do. Still a place for it. But uh, one of the things that I realized is that when they went from having their own book to being wrapped into the greater orc dumb. Uh, they lost a lot. They lost a lot, a lot of their background, their lore. Like, pe folks don't often know that, like, the original Bone Splitters Battle Tome had an own, like, written language section of how they would differentiate their enemies as they came across them. Um, it was just interesting stuff. I, I feel like the OG Sylvaneth one was similar. And so, um, they kind of eased up on that. So I'm very excited to see what the battle tomes become. Because just as much as it is a, a new addition change, which means they get a chance, a new crack at what it means to play the core rules of the game, they get a new crack at what it means to buy a battle tome. Where the value comes, price margins, all that, I mean, all that stuff, right? Is wrapped up in value. I am just so interested to see where it lands. Anyway, my point in that is that when the book got moved over, it lost a lot of those little things. Um, my bone splitters got combined with iron jaws. I lost all interest. I was right there with you. I actually, so that's when I got rid of my bone splitters initially. I sold them to my buddy who later on went on to have his own battle report channel, Jack from Rolling Ones. And then on the tail end, I got them back right before they <laughs> got nuked. Well, right before, about a year ago. And then I sold them off like, oh, a month and a half ago, something like that. <clears throat> oh no, it have been. It would have been closer to two, three years ago at this point that I would have gotten them then. Okay. I had them for a bit. I do wish W... I love the new Liberator sculpts, but I still feel like the originals would work well. Do we know for a fact that they've said you can't? My understanding was that you can Or are you saying that like you, you hope it's not an issue in the future? Honestly, I think the biggest thing is they just want their models being used. I don't know. Like, I can't imagine that that would bar you entry from any GW event to use a one of their old liberators. 
you might not get featured on their stream if they're just looking at, you know, randomly painted models and they're trying to pick armies to have featured for no real reason. Whatever, that's their prerogative, though. But, like, I don't really see it, foresee it being a major issue. Okay, by the way, Doug, the sculpts would be unsupported. Well, it depends on what you mean, unsupported. Like, a liberator is a liberator. It still is an old liberator. I think that they would not have a problem with you bringing a liberator from Gen 1. I don't, in, in you know, in lieu of a liberator from the new kits, I don't think anyone would care about that. If you mean, like, the sacrosanct stuff, uh... That's different. I'm sorry, I thought we were having the same conversation, but I think we're talking about two different things. By the way, since I brought up Lumineth earlier, did I go too hard in my last comment on the River Blades? I don't... I'm not seeing it. Good luck, man. Sorry. <laughs> okay, we gotta paint some bone stuff next. So let's get. I like to use decomposed flesh by AK. Now I uh. I don't get a lot of it. I don't get much. That's just my tagline. That should be the theme of the entire channel. I, we joke about that. My wife and I have just... If I ever ran for office, my political platform is just going to be vote for Doug. He doesn't know much. It's just... Call me a lot of things. He'll never call me a liar. <laughs> Uh, let's see. My understanding is definitely that the old and new models are interchangeable. They have the same base size and all. Yeah, that was my understanding. But if you mean like the sacrosanct stuff, yes, I would understand that would be a different topic. And I was just veering off. Oh, uh, my wife and I started watching the Fallout show. Has anyone... No spoilers, please. I think we're episode... Four? I don't know. I only have the capacity for like two a day, and then I start getting antsy in my seat, and I'm just like, eh. I want to do something else. <laughs> these were horns for a second they are definitely like the kelp thing so let me get that green back out so yes i think we're on episode five right now and my consensus is um it is i'm entertained by it i feel like it doesn't do enough to explain the fiction of the universe quite yet but we'll see maybe there's more exposition to come just watch the first episode my wife and i loved it yes lucy is an awesome character <laughs> um the ghoul very much enjoying story there oh man 
Favorite part of the fallout was when fallout said it's outing time. Fallout is exactly what you want it to be. <laughs> So I have to see how it ends. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. I kind of just jumped into some concepts like, you know, this is his first episode, so not spoilers, but they like name drop the Enclave and that kind of stuff. And it's like, interesting. Okay. So they just, they, it feels like they bit off a lot all at once. And I've heard nothing but good things. So I'm, I'm trusting the process. One thing that my wife pointed out to me that is very true was that the way that you share and express information is so much different in a video game than in say cinematography or uh you know it, honestly all of it editing the way it's shot directed everything uh that you kind of just have to trust the process and be like well let's see how they try to explain you know mr handies <laughs> of all things in this medium versus a different one. I was like, that's actually a very insightful point. Because coming to it, the video games do have the luxury of notes. You know, as far as like, we can read terminals from people and get omniscient narrator information. I was like, that's a fair point. But she's a captain in the family. <laughs> Keeps the ship afloat. All right. This guy here. Uh, is the ghoul named Hancock? No, it is not. It is not that specific ghoul. <laughs> I just downloaded Fallout 4 on the PS4 for 750. Quite the steal. Oh yeah. They gotta milk those sales for the next, you know, five, six years till they get the next one out. <laughs> I had picked uh, 76 back up for a bit. And then, I don't know, for some reason I just kind of, just kind of lost interest. I felt like I was doing a lot of the same missions over and over again. And if, uh, if it's just about, uh, achieving like the daily events or whatever, I'd rather honestly go play Animal Crossing. If I need to, if I need to feel like I've achieved something without doing anything, I'd rather have the stuffed animals tell me that I'm a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> then some raider be like, hey, hey, ho. that you wanted to know how allies would be handled. Do you think instead of buying individual allied units as auxiliaries, you could take a single regiment of renown? Yeah, so that the rumor as I know it was in, instead of picking choices, like 
you don't pick a fire slayer ally with a hero and you then you choose the units but rather you take the fire slayer ally detachment which is a bespoke set it is a magma droth rider with two units of hearth guard berserkers or whatever you know, whatever the set is um but there's no choices it tells you exactly what it is that's that was what i thought I thought that Tom said it on Warhammer Weekly. Would have been a while ago, though. Uh, morning, it's 7 a.m. here. Well, hey, good morning, Nate. You should try Cult of the Lamb. I did. I actually maxed out all of the achievements and stuff to do in Cult of the Lamb. Uh, well, like all the the different like I don't know theologies and stuff like that that you can follow. I did all those, uh, but the problem is I'm just really not good at like the top down kind of view of video games, and I found combat to be very difficult for me, no matter how many of the buffs I got. So eventually I put it down, but yes, Cult of the Lamb. If you guys have not played it, it is incredible. Go be a cult leader. Imagine if like, I don't know, a cute little stuffed animal lamb became an infernal gateway of hell. It's awesome. You know, normal stuff like that. <laughs> I don't see enough likes here. Oh, that's kind of you. How are you doing, Beard Hammer? I um I had a giggly moment where I got name dropped on a podcast that I was not expecting and it made my morning. Um if you guys don't listen to the the Hive Scum podcast, it's a lot of like Inquisition 28. Uh they have a, their own game that I had mentioned uh I want to cover when it's a little bit more developed and that is uh Flames of Orion. Think of it like a uh a BattleTech light game. Um it's more interesting than that but it's a basic concept <clears throat> and uh anyway i was listening to their podcast and one of them mentioned that like they recognized my voice i came up and i said hi and i asked them about the game and they were talking about how they didn't have a sales pitch prepared at the time and one of the guys was like i just stood there looking into this guy's soul <laughs> it just made me laugh a lot so much so that i spit out my coffee a little bit had to get my wife to come listen to it So I messaged them on their Discord. I was like, oh man, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Let's see, we got. Oh, man. Paint his little bomb up. And you can get. Um, the STLs for this, if you have your own, 
resin printer or uh, they do I think sell them on Etsy they like license out their designs but I was just so intrigued with the fish people and I was like I need these in my life my life would be enhanced by having dumpy Aquaman point his little Squidward of Doom at his enemies. Probably tall enough to maybe stab them in the shins. Okay, I go over here. Um, since we have a few more folks in the chat here, I would love to know what everybody is working on. We had a few things shout out last time as far as get some flesh eater quartz. And I believe someone said Stormcast. Maybe that was mixing conversations. Nith Deepkin and Fire Slayers. Nice. Gene Stealers. Nice. Are your Gene Stealers for 40k or for Kill Team? Or I'm just curious, like, what, what do you play? I mean, they're good in everything. Sexiest army. Death Guard, nice. Playing Hell Divers, but I'm gonna work on Orc Commandos here in a bit. Nice. I uh, I think I may have talked about this in the last stream. I got Hell Divers too for my. We're technically cousins, but the age gap is enough that I'm functionally an uncle. Anyway, um, but he said he wanted it, and so then I had to do like I'm so out of touch with video games. I felt like a very old man. Having to research like Hell Divers too. <laughs> what are the youths playing now? <laughs> are they still driving around in their carted Mario's? <laughs> and then I started watching like a mm, oh, an absolute deluge of videos for it. It looks super cool. Unfortunately, I do not have anything but the PC that it runs on, and I do not like gaming on my PC. Uh, let's see, 40k Leviathan, oh sweet. I worked my Stormcast earlier, nice, nice. Let's see, we need Skeleton Warrior, Death Guard. He's coming along, he's coming along. Looking good, looking fly. Gotta finish 10 Gene Stealers and 20-ish Hormigons before AOS 4.0 comes out. Gonna change all my older Skaven models for new ones. They're Horde Army, I like the suffering. <laughs> I, uh, that's how I felt. I was, um, eyeing up those new 
uh, Dark Oath models that they previewed. And man, I just keep looking at them and looking and looking and looking. And but it's like, do I really do I really want a horde of Marauders when I'm staring at boxes of Flesh Eater Quartz and I still got Gloom Spike Gits? Although my Gits is all um, Squig stuff. Like I don't I don't have numerically a lot of Gits, even though I have like 3K. Wanted to keep painting, but the problem is my body is sore for some reason. Maybe the gym. Uh, I understand that injury. Yes. I and it's there's nothing worse than those days where it just is, it just literally is too uncomfortable to sit there and paint. Totally feel. Do you also want the new Skaven? Nah, I'm. Uh, they would have to do something. I'm trying to think. Like I don't want to say never, because I'll paint a lot of stuff. I, the only thing I can I can confidently say never again to is specifically the plague monks, which uh, the, then the reasons have only magnified since getting better Skaven kits. But I just didn't have fun painting them. At the end of the day, that's all it was. Um. I'm gonna grab this. But I'm trying to think, like, my favorite Skaven minis. There's the Doom Wheel. Gotta love the Doom Wheel. But I don't know. They, they just don't uh, they just don't do it for me in the same way other things do. I'd be much more tempted by the Marauders than Skaven. Now the real question is, would I rather do a Skaven army or a Stormcast one if I had to choose? Because I am... I have already bought, painted, and sold at least three Stormcast armies. Maybe more? Let me see. Silver Hallowed Knights, Knights Excelsior, um, Knights Templar. Oh yeah, those three. Does he have one more left in him? I don't know. It's a bold move, Cotton. Mm, the new Skaven looking good. I wouldn't run and buy them day one. Not really my kind of thing overall. Yeah. If you mark howdy, what's that? Oh, these are, I mentioned them before, uh, some miniatures for the game Legends of Signum. Or by, I mean, you can just buy the models. It's one of those design studios that makes like waves of stellar model kits. Um, and so there are rules associated with it, but they're mostly a design company from my understanding. So yes, look at these little Cthulhu fish men. Uh, one, if you are if you haven't been here since the beginning, I'll show off this guy. He's the boss of the group. He's like an old wizard type and he's riding a colossal war crab. And I know it's a little hard to see because he's just primed, but if you look at the end of the brush right here, the crab is holding a giant, like, steaming cannonball. There's the steam trail coming out of it. So, anyway, I love this guy. I'm so excited to have him fully painted. I'm trying to get the chumps out of the way so I can really focus. But yes, I'm here for the fishmen. 
bring me to your fishmen. I'm gonna have this squid be orange. They should bring out escape airship thing. <laughs> yes. Oh man. You can still use your existing models with the new rules. Your old liberators will be able to use the latest war scroll. Yes. Thank you so much, Willie, for going out and finding that article for us. Yes, question was raised earlier, or at least I understood that was the question. May not have been in the initial place, but thank you so much. The about like, can I still use my old liberators or whatever? gonna be so good all little bits and bobs that was just the AOS Facebook account responding not some one just saying oh gotcha you Have you made the old Skaven clan rats? Oh, like the Island of Blood ones where it's just two parts? Yeah. Yeah, I made those. I made a bunch of them. Um, as far as like, I, don't, I mean, I haven't seen like the kit for the new ones or anything like that. As far as how to build them, I have no idea. Um, as far as what they look like, honestly, they look like Skaven. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, they look great. I mean, they're wonderful models. I, I just like when I think about looking at them from three, you know, roughly three to four feet away. Like if my opponent has them on their side of the table, I'm not sure I could tell you the difference really. Like if they were mixed together, I couldn't be like, oh yes, this is one of the old Skaven, hmm, a pauper Skaven army. I see. I'd be like, I hey, got sixty rats there. I need to do something about that. <laughs> You know, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, like, the difference is not, like, uh, let's see. When AOS 1 dropped, the closest thing that any of the Chaos Gods had to their own version of Marauders was um, the Blood Reavers. But they were just so much more dynamic <clears throat> uh, than the old Marauder kits were. I was just like, oh yeah, this is no contest. Those are so much better. But these two, they just feel very similar. One is certainly of a higher quality. The newer one, of course. Um, yeah. I think they look more evil and scary. Right on. Maybe there's a head or something I wasn't seeing. They also do this thing uh, with GW where they post like pictures of stuff on the Facebook page that I don't follow, or I go up for me all the time. Because um, during our last stream, like I didn't see a Liberator comparison that they had of some other photo with a Liberator in it. And someone had to go find that for me because it was on Facebook, but it wasn't actually on the community page where everything should be hosted. It didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Both airships and submarines are canon for Skaven. They get around. They try new things. They innovate. <laughs> I 
I like that they're going to end up being the chaos version of uh, Caradron Overlords, where it's like everything's going terrible, and then all of a sudden these dinguses are like, oh, we should try something different, who come up with these crazy, ridiculous machines. Other ones who make the future, like, oh yes. Tiny, the dash of innovation goes a long way. a lot from the dwarves yes my uh one of my favorite videos to make and it's certainly not one of my most popular but it, i find it fun was the battle at scrap a spill which is from i believe the ko battle tome or one of the older ones where they go to the gloom spite get fortress city of scrap a spill because there's a down ship that was just lost in the junk heap kids don't even know about it they don't even care not on their radar until like an air armada opens up and just annihilates everything. People start like exploding. Uh, like stunty team six comes in <laughs> and <laughs> cracks open the, like the junk heap seemingly at random. Like there's no context for what's going on. And then they're out of there. And it's just like this flash battle where the, you just kind of feel bad for the gloom spite, <laughs> which is just a very strong turn of events. <laughs> They were just hanging out being dinguses and then they got rocked. Uh, in case you're curious what I'm painting, this uh, octopi, octopus, is uh, equipped with, what am I getting caught on? Aha, uh -huh, the axe, okay. Kind of a hard angle to get into. Uh, he has a bandana on. So I'm still just blocking out the base colors and then I'm going to go back after I do a wash and pick out anything stronger. That's basically the idea. Uh, Cult of Nine, I am painting up some models from the series Legend of Signum. Got some fish people. I think all I'm missing is one of these guys. Yeah, him. Missed his ears. nice to see interactions between Skaven and the other Chaos factions. Agreed. I would love... Yeah, I'd love to see more of that. I feel like... Uh, I can never remember because their names are always so ridiculous. There is a Black Library book about a Gloom Spike get, who gets blessed by the Clammy Hand. He gets his own... Is it Trug? His own um, Trogoth to go with him places. I don't know. Basically, it looks like uh, Thankful and Bone Ripper, but for the gits. And I poorly tell that story to convey that I just, I feel like there's a lot of story making potential. Um, yeah, with the Skaven interacting, just because they are so looked down upon. Kind of look like Murlocs, but with bigger crab pets. I suppose so, yeah. Do 
These are like little barnacle things and I'm just throwing some light warm flesh tones on because it's a really good base to add other colors if you want to make them look gross. thinking of bad loon rising yes 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 i had so much fun listening to that book okay so now we're gonna just dunk everything in a heavy wash because that's how a dug do we paint like troglodytes in this dojo to use here. Steven could use some main characters. Thankful and Vermin Lords can only carry them for so long. Yeah, I generally agree. Well, and I don't even need main characters. I don't care about that. Like, I think just like we were talking about Bad Loon Rising where they kind of give you just names and places like Skagrod or something like where they don't have to be like a full mover and shaker god tier Kragnos thing. Just give me somebody who like exemplifies the faction. Give me something, you know what I mean, like that. Do you think they'll bring back or redesign the troglodytes? Oh, I don't even know what that is. I was just saying that as a word. <laughs> I was unaware that fantasy ever had troglodytes. Test model he's already done, so I just got these three other nerds. Agreed, new characters could go a long way. Breathe new life into the faction. Yeah, like if they had a... Like imagine if they came out with a... A box that was kind of like, say... What are they called? The Loon Court? Ah, uh, dang it. Now I can't think of their names. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so brain bogged right now um the gloom spike gets guys where it's a unit of five and they all have different abilities one's a shroom mancer one's a guy with a little sun cool i'm just gonna walk forward here and assume that somebody can name the unit inside the comment section praise be to them so i i want something like that but imagine instead of the gabapalooza that's what it is okay i said it before any comments came in just so we know <laughs> <laughs> but imagine a Gabapalooza type unit for the Skaven where it's like, you know, the council head or something like that. Um, and the idea was, you know, you have a chief warlock engineer on there. You have uh, your verminist style guy, right? Whatever it used to be, Ikit Claw or whatever his name was. You just have the different kinds of leaders and then a Skaven army is all of those Dingus is trying to work together, and maybe you can pick and choose what the unit is, but something like that, where you have a mix of abilities, leaderships, that kind of thing. I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. That could be iterated on. But I think there's I think there's more potential in characterful units like that in armies like Skaven, like Gloom Spike gets. Um, I would even say in cities, like if there was a command squad type thing that was just all leaders that 
perform dex functions or whatever and like you could you know have a coterie of wizards or something i'd be down for that that's rad make it claw with scry okay yes but yes i was thinking well i was thinking of an engineer guy but a claw lord was what i had pictured when i made that statement thank you but yeah i mean those kinds of things like I think that would be a pretty cool and just call it the leadership of the pack. Uh, maybe each squad of them, you can pick two out of the three options or five options or whatever there are. I don't know. I feel sad that clan rats and storm vermin got deleted. Uh, don't. They're coming back. I mean, the, the, Thing that you should feel sad about is that someone at GW decided to uh, I don't know not put that they're coming back in another form like no one's gonna kick in your door and take away your clan rat so you can definitely go to a GW event with the old ones and there's gonna be a bunch of them online as there always have been because Residual highs of the Island of Blood set from forever ago. <laughs> Still permeate and taint this land. <laughs> okay, sweet. So I got everybody washed. Next step is going to be... Application of some highlights. Hey Doug, how's it going? Thanks for always making great videos for us to watch. Anytime I feel like I've lost interest in the hobby, watch your videos. Aw, thank you so much, Jambo. That's very kind of you to say. That made my day. Bro, we have a command squad. Oh yeah, I forgot about those guys. I'll be honest, most of the army releases for that kind of just... I like them aesthetically, but when it came to like thinking about how to put an army together, I was just never tempted to start a city's army with their current book. Nobody will kick down your door and take your clan rats. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't want to sound, <laughs> I don't sound like a douche, but like, <laughs> yes. We've been sent directly from James Workshop himself. I would almost like it if it was, uh, you know, you met a guy on Craigslist to buy a hundred clan rats from, you know, the year 2007 or whatever off of them guy selling him just like takes off a ski mask and his FBI trying to bust you. Now I'm just trying to think of all those like silly commercials of like, you wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't steal a clan rat, would you? Uh, with each Grand Alliance had a faction like Ogres, they have uh, units of Great Alliances. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Now for the eyes on this tester model, I have them as kind of like a beige bone color, just as a placeholder. I was thinking about going for the eyes um, like almost pure white or yellow, but it has to be a bright yellow because I need it to stand out of the green yellow that is their skin. I think the white would be a, probably a better choice, but... The new gorgers would look great with a flesh eater quartz army. Oh yeah, I would have one be a. Uh... What you do is you buy one pack of those because they come in a pack of like four or five, right? Um, that's all your crypt haunt night courtiers or whatever in one box. 
Talk about a command box. There you go. That the other guys had those little angler fish lights. Also, what do you have against the new cities? Absolutely nothing. They just didn't intrigue me. Like, they look beautiful. Love seeing them on the table. Love all the painted depictions of them. I actually like the new sculpts and stuff like that better than the classic look. But, uh, I don't know. When it came to play them, I just I looked at the rules and I, I just I wasn't caught by anything there was i didn't feel like oh that's a really cool way to represent this idea that i would like to bring to the table i just didn't have that moment and that's like a two each their own thing Should check out Sorcerer Kings from Conquest. Oh yes. I actually just got a couple of local guys interested enough to try Conquest. I'm very excited. I desperately want local players. It's such a good game. Parabellum is such a good company. Oh, my neighbor, LaDouche, is back. I call him that because he decides to rev his motorcycle as loud as humanly possible uh, with frightening rev regularity. And um, he stands at maybe a whopping four foot eight. I mean, he's a tiny little dude. That might be an exaggeration. He's a tiny little guy. And uh, he revs his great big motorcycle when he walks out. He has a big old um, like rider jacket on and put it so big on him it looks like it's like a kid who stole his dad's and so my wife and i will just be on the porch chilling just watch him go out to his bike yeah i'm gonna go catch me a bunch of girls today i'm a big man big motorcycle <laughs> uh, just just generally being nuisances on the porch Enjoy making fun of them. We have a bunch of nicknames for them, none of which I'll say. <laughs> Agreed. Love the new Source for King models. Yes. Yes, when I when I look at armies like to not for like how they fit into the game, that's one thing. When I look at armies for what I personally want to play, I typically um it's because I see an interaction or something like that that just really takes me, I don't know, gets me interested in playing them. Um, for Flesh Eater Quartz, it was like, I, I like the different delusions. For the Gits, uh, it's the Squigs. Whatever rules for Squigs are, the Squigs are always fun. I uh, busted out all of my Wadroon for the first time because I th was thinking of maybe selling them and just working on my Sorcerer Kings. And after I pulled them all out, I was like, man, I painted like 1,400 points of these guys. And sadly, I don't get enough Conquest games in to do another army. But then, right as I had my All is Lost moment, yeah, a few local guys were like, hey, I might be interested in that, so... 
Is so freaking cool, goodness gracious. <laughs> I love this guy. Second sexiest Mortark behind Neferata. I think Neferata is the best version of that entire kit. I know a lot of folks like Nuanfrid, a lot of folks like Arcan. I think they made Neferata and then were like, ah crap, we gotta reverse engineer this to make two more dudes. <laughs> I have no proof of that. That's just wild Doug speculation, but you're welcome to it. <laughs> sit at a weird angle. I feel like it's kind of up my nose as I sit like this. I could have just been silent about it, but I decided to make it awkward and take you with me. So this is what a Doug ASMR channel would be, just... Now paint. <laughs> it puts the paint on the model. You could resist the bulge of catacros. You can't see it past the 12 dudes standing in front of them. <laughs> it's got so many people on that base. That's honestly, I find those, and, and that's part of why I, to be real, I find those models very intimidating that and i think there's a sisters of battle like the shrine of some saint or whatever where there's like 30 different people hanging out waiting for the bus on this one base and you're like why These are like Vargolfy creatures. I gotta do something with them. I have not decided what yet. Triumph of St. Catherine, thank you. Yes, I believe that's right. It. Catherine makes... The uncanny valley face of Catacros does not help the bold situation. <laughs> not only does it not 
matter how big your bulge is to, to fix uh, a horrifying facial issue. It actually, at a certain point, has a cascading terrible effect on, <laughs> on our perceptions. <laughs> oh, man. Or an inverse effect. That's what it does to him for, not cascading. Alright. We're gonna we're gonna cross the streams here with a little army painter thinner. Sorry, speed paint medium. Too incorrect here. A little wild wood. Now I know you've been led to believe on the internet that if you mix GW and Army Painter paints, they will become volatile and explode. But doing is just picking out the fur immediately around the head stuff that would clearly be a part of this creature and nothing else Witchcraft. <laughs> this guy likes to dry brush. I actually had a great time dry brushing this main back part of this uh, cape sitch. So what I did was I put my one to one mix, uh, the medium contrast down and then I come right back to it with pure contrast and it kind of blends and thins out as it goes that's what I'm looking for just add more brown pigment as needed and then it's not just good it's good enough border joke there for you. And I'm hoping to get a little bit more definition with the bone. Now that beasts of chaos are gone, do you think GW are ever going to flesh out the ogroid further? 
I mean, they still have Ogroid in what? Zinch has an Ogroid Thaumaturge. Uh, we still have them in uh, Slaves of Darkness. Just semi recently got a set. I don't see any reason to think that they'll head anywhere. I feel like for most of the purges, if they were going to do it, they would have done it. They got enough bad press from, from one day. But if you mean just like in general, just not develop them anymore. I mean, there's factions that can use them. Wait until the Hedonites come out with the Ogroid Seductress. And we see where people's real loyalties are. <laughs> By the way, I will advocate for that. I don't even really like Slanesh, and I will advocate, advocate for uh, the Ogroid Seductress to be an official unit. <clears throat> Absolutely. 10 out of 10. Now when these are dry, I'm going to do just another quick light brush with a uh, dry brush with some browns on top of the little animal bits here. And then uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start doing some basing stuff. So where is that? Ogroid Thick Boy. Oh, that could be the optional build, yeah. In case anyone's curious, this stuff is Vallejo Mud. This big old jar costs, I think, 12 bucks compared to the tiny little paint pots of GW. And they have a ton of different styles. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Would also say Google which one you want to get before you get to the store and just grab one because some of these have all different kinds of textures. Like some of them are meant to be asphalt and it doesn't just mean color, it means the texture and everything. So just kind of Google. Make sure it's what you're looking for, but this is quite cool. I didn't have a, a game store that even stocked this uh, Iowa City. Or sorry, until um, Ankeny. The whole Sisters of Battle range, in my opinion, looks rubbish. Sisters of Battle. Oh, like. Uh, Nuns with guns? You don't like nuns with guns? Oh, I love it. I'm not even an old time, you know, fanboy who like were pining for their return. I'm just like, I've only ever heard of them by name. And uh, I don't know, I kind of love the range. I was on the verge of starting one and then we moved, so I sold off all my unfinished projects just for fundage. been successfully gunked puts me at an hour 45 friends I think I'm gonna go ahead and hop off for the day I just wanted to get a little bit of hobby done and now this guy can sit overnight and dry so I can dry brush to the base and his back tomorrow and uh, if you're interested I'm gonna do a video that talks about him more but go check out Legends of Signum because they have a whole bunch of models that have all different kinds of great representation from 
ladies, disabled folks, all kinds of stuff. It's really cool. Uh, and they're all projected in these fantastic fantasy art ways. I just love them. So anyway, go check that all out and I will catch you all very soon.